Hey, welcome back everyone. So my name is Zach Vines and what we're gonna look at today is how to find the cost of goods sold balance when we're dealing with inventory and cost of goods sold under three different methods, FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. So first I just wanna show you the big picture of what's actually going on, show you the journal entries that kind of build the foundation of the examples we're gonna look at, look at a couple of examples going through each of the methods and wrap things up. So to start with, what happens when we buy inventory? You know, so we are a company and we're selling some good to a customer. So we have to buy that inventory so that we have it, so that we can sell it to the customer. So when we first buy the inventory, clearly our inventory account is going to go up. We're gonna debit inventory by the amount it costs us to purchase it. Um, and then depending on if we paid cash for it or if we paid it on account, we're either gonna decrease our cash account with a credit or increase our accounts payable liability with a credit as well. Um, so the reason, notice, we don't do an expense whenever we buy the inventory, which seems a little bit weird because usually we might think of when we purchase a service, we expense something, if we sell a good, we get revenue. But remember, in financial accounting, it's, we're dealing with a matching principle, meaning that revenues, we don't recognize those until we earn those revenues, and we recognize them in the period that we earn them. So with expenses, we don't recognize the expense until we've received the benefit of what we purchased and that's the period that we actually recognize the expense. So really what's going on is that we consider it to be the case that we didn't get the benefit from buying that inventory until we sell it. Because that's the point of buying the inventory is that you're pretty much a store serving as an intermediary between a supplier and a customer. You are buying the inventory so you can sell it to a customer. So it's when you sell to a customer that you recognize the expense and the name of that expense is cost of goods sold. So like I said, when you buy the inventory, simply inventory account increase and then you either decrease cash or increase your accounts payable depending if it was a cash uh, purchase or a credit purchase. And then when we sell the inventory, there are really two journal entries that happen. One, to recognize kind of the sale side of things, the fact that you earned revenue, you sold the product, which is the first one right there. So, you know, we either sell it for cash or we sell it on account. So we either debit or increase the balance in your cash account or your accounts receivable account when you sell that inventory. And then because you have now sold it and you have earned that revenue, we're gonna credit or increase the balance of your revenue account. And you do that at the selling price that you sold it for. Whereas on the other hand, we still have to recognize the expense associated with that inventory because now that we've sold it, we've recognized the benefit of having purchased that inventory in the first place. So we debit or increase the balance in cost of goods sold, which is an expense account, and we credit or decrease the balance in our inventory account. And you do those based on the cost that you incurred when you purchased the inventory, not the selling price, because we didn't, per we're selling the good at a price above what we paid for it. So we're getting, we're keeping the inventory based on our cost, not the selling price. The selling price is where the cash or AR and then the revenue comes in. So the way you find this cost of goods sold right here, the actual dollar value of that, is based on a couple of different methods. We have LIFO, FIFO, and weighted average. We're pretty much, we have sort of a, a supply of inventory on hand where we had a beginning amount, we make some purchases, we make some sales, and all that shakes up into a final amount. When we do LIFO, what that means is that we're saying the most recent goods that we purchased, the, most, the last ones that we purchased, those are the first ones that are gonna go out. So keep in mind, because prices tend to go up over time because of inflation and just kind of the way that prices behave, we would expect that as the purchases continue throughout the year, each purchase might have a different dollar value. It might have costed a different amount for each of those purchases. So the, the units of inventory that we use to value our cost of goods sold is different if we're using LIFO, which would be the most recent units, probably the more expensive units, versus FIFO, which would be the very first units, the oldest units are going to be sold first. So it's first in, first out. And then the weighted average method is basically taking into account that there is a difference, likely difference, between what we had to pay to get all those units of inventory. So we come up with an average cost per unit and just multiply it by the number of units that we sold to to get our cost of goods sold for that. So we're gonna go through one example that's gonna show, it's the same example, but it's gonna go through FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. We're gonna find cost of goods sold, your ending inventory, and then one other value. So let's do that right now. Okay, so for this particular example, we're looking, gonna look at FIFO to begin with, but we're gonna use that same information for each of these examples we're gonna do. So we're gonna keep that right there, but for right now, we're just talking about how to calculate cost of goods sold 
what your ending inventory is and what your gross margin is based on FIFO. So one thing I want to point out real quick that I didn't mention in the beginning is that gross margin is just the difference between your revenue, which is what you've sold your products for, the you know overall revenue that you've earned, minus the cost of goods sold value you get. So you'll find that after we do the cost of goods sold, you'll need that to sort of get to the gross margin, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So to start with, the information we're provided is that in as our company, we have 100 units of inventory at the beginning of the year. What those units of inventory were valued at is $3 per unit. Um, so later in the year, we get a purchase of inventory where we go, okay, we need more inventory for our store, let's buy some more. So we buy another 50 units, but notice that the price went up. They're now $3.10 per unit instead of $3. So you can see that over time, prices tend to go up. So it's very important that we know our LIFO versus FIFO versus weighted average so we can look at the particular units that we're going to use for our cost of goods sold. The second purchase, we do another 150 units valued at $3.30. And then at the end, we sell 180 units at $5 a unit. So that $5 is the selling price of it, not what they were valued at. So it's kind of our job to use FIFO in this situation to go back and see how we're going to value our inventory. So really the process is fairly simple when you have it laid out chronologically like that. So FIFO means first in, first out. So the first units of inventory that we sell are going to be the first ones that are going away. So if I sell 180 units of inventory and I start with the ones that I had the oldest units of inventory that I had from the very beginning, then selling 180 units completely eliminates my beginning inventory of 100. So my cost of goods sold is going to include all the 100 units of inventory from the beginning at that $3 a unit. So $300 is a part of my cost of goods sold. But after I get rid of that 100, I still have 80 units from that sale of 180 from the 100 to account for. So I go into the next most, re uh, not the most recent ones, but the, the next oldest ones, which is going to be the first purchase. We eliminate the beginning. We go into the first purchase. So now we're looking at those 50. Well, if we're trying to get to 180, we've done 100 that next 50 is also going to be completely eliminated. So we know we're selling all 50 of those units that are valued at $3.10. So multiply the two and you get 155. That's another part of your cost of goods sold. And then finally, we had one more purchase, that second purchase that we can go into since we've eliminated the first units from first in, first out. But we only need 30 of those units because we've done 100 from the beginning, we've done 50 from the first purchase, and now we're just doing the remaining 30 to get us to our 180 from the second purchase. So I do 30 units times what it was valued at, $3.30, multiply it across, you get 99, add up all of those, the 300, 155, and 99, and your total cost of goods sold is going to be 554. So that's what you're going to put in the number for the journal entries that we went over in the beginning of the video, the amount that you reduce your inventory by and the amount you increase your cost of goods sold by. So if we want to find out what our ending inventory is, there are two ways to go about it. I think the first method is a little bit simpler. I'll show you kind of another way to do it, but we have only 120 units left because we got rid of the 100 from the beginning, we got rid of the 50 from the first purchase, and we got rid of 30 from the second purchase, meaning we're left with 120 units. So if we're left one, with 120 units from the second purchase, then 120 times the $3.30 that it's valued at gives you the amount of your remaining inventory, what it's going to be valued at. Another way you could do it is if you multiplied your total inventory value, so your beginning, or just really the quantity times the dollar per unit for your beginning inventory and your first and second purchase, you have what the overall value of your inventory is. So if you have what your overall inventory is and you take out the portion you sold, what you're left with is what you're left with, the ending inventory. So that's another way to do it. You can kind of double check. It'll give you the exact same answers at 396. So when we want to find our gross margin, we need to just first find our revenue, which is simply going to be what we sold our goods for. So we had 180 goods and they were sold at $5 a unit. So 180 times 5 is the 900 that I recognize in my revenue. And then the same cost of goods sold that I just calculated from FIFO, I just plug right into the formula. So the 554 is your cost of goods sold and the difference between the two is going to be 346. So you just do it like that. So let's do the next example, everything that we just did right there, but we're using LIFO instead. 
Okay, so exact same problem, but now with LIFO. So we're gonna pretty much do the exact same thing where we're kind of tracking which goods that we're selling and what they were valued at. But instead of talking about the very first goods, we're talking about the most recent goods, the last goods that were purchased. So I know I sold 180 units of inventory, so I'm gonna go into the most recent purchase, which was that second purchase. So that actually gets rid of most of my 180, but not quite. So it gets rid out of 150 out of the 180. So I'm gonna completely wipe out my second purchase by doing 150 times what it was valued at, that $3.30, and 495 is a part of my cost of goods sold. So at that point, if I'm done with 150, all I have left is that 30 to get me to 180. So the 30 is going to come from the next purchase, which is the first purchase. So we're just going back in time, wiping out the most recent orders until we don't have them anymore. So in the first purchase, we get rid of 30 of those. So 30 times what it was valued at, $3.10, is 93. You combine the two, your cost of goods sold is 588. To find your ending inventory, it's going to be the same thing as before. You can either just count how many units of inventory we have left. We know that we got rid of the 150 from the second purchase. We got rid of 30 out of the first purchase, leaving us with 20 out of the first purchase. So what I have left with is the 20 out of the first purchase times the $3.10 that that purchase is valued at. That's going to give you 62. And then you have all of your beginning inventory as well, because you never got into that, because you sold everything just out of the second and first purchase. So the beginning inventory is just 100 units times $3 a unit, it's 300. You add the two, that's 362. Again, another way you could do that is if, if you already came up with the total value of your inventory, just by multiplying across your beginning, first purchase, and second purchase, and adding all that together, you can just subtract out what you had for cost of goods sold, and that's what you're left with. And then finally, for your gross margin, it's just going to be your revenue number, which is the same as before. The 180 times the $5, just the amount of the sale right there, gives you your 900 in revenue. Subtract out the cost of goods sold that you had from the LIFO right there, and you're left with your gross margin. So let's do one more with weighted average. You'll see it's a little bit different compared to what we did right here, but it's simpler in some ways. Depends on kind of which way you think. So let's see. All right, so it's the exact same problem one more time, except this time we're using the weighted average method. So it's not gonna be exactly the same as before, where we're kind of just like counting the number of units either going from the oldest to newest or newest to oldest. We're using kind of an average cost for all of our inventory, given that the prices have changed, given that we have different amounts of inventory at these different prices, we come up with a weighted average cost for that inventory, and then just value every piece of inventory like that, instead of keeping up with exactly which ones we sold first and last. It's just all one uniform cost based on the average between all of them. So naturally, the first step we would have to do is to find the average. So we have all of these costs, so we need to find our overall cost for all of the inventory. If we can take our overall cost and divide it by the overall units, that's your overall cost per unit. It's just a matter of getting there in the first place. So what we do is that all the information we have provided, except for the selling, because that's just the selling price, that's your cash, that's your revenue, it doesn't actually have to do with what your inventory is valued at, we're going to take our quantity, multiply it by our cost per unit, and get those values. So 100 times 3 is 300, so on and so forth, until you add all those up and you get $950 as your overall cost that you spent to get all of that inventory. So now that you have that, we're just going to come up with, well, what are the overall units that we purchased for that amount? You go, okay, well, we started with 100, then we had another 50 units, then another 150 units. So you add all that together and you have 300 units. So if you spent $950 on 300 units, then your cost per unit is just the cost divided by the number of units, which roundabout ends up being about $3.17 average cost per unit. So at this point, if I want to find my cost of goods sold, I just say I sold 180 units. I value them at about $3.17 per unit. So $3.17 per unit times the number of units sold is your cost of goods sold. It's going to be 570.6. And then for your ending inventory, same thing as before. You go, okay, well, we had 300 units overall. I sold 180 of them, meaning I'm, I have left 120 units. So I multiply that by my average cost per unit, and it gives me that ending inventory of 380.4. And then finally, for gross margin, 
just your revenue minus your cost of goods sold. So the revenue is that same number from before. It's just the 180 units that we sold times the $5 that we sold them for. 900 in revenue minus what you got for cost of goods sold. Difference between the two is your gross margin. So you can see it's just a couple of different formulas you have to know. Uh, you know, LIFO and FIFO and weighted average. It makes very intuitive sense when you do a couple of examples. You can really wrap your head around and almost see the, the inventory going in and out the door based on which one came first and just based off of the cost that it was valued at, what we paid for it, decides what the cost of goods sold was. So I hope that helps and thank you for watching.